I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'm working with you step by step through the ABRSM Theory Grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you go to SharonBill.com you'll find some free PDF information sheets which you can download in US Letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. You'll find a page there with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also find out about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam. It's full of tips and hints on how to best be prepared for your exam and also how to make the best use of your time on exam day. So if you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find it's all there. If you can give me a like, that would be really super and please do subscribe to my channel and do share out the videos. And now we're going to crack on with the next questions on the 2019 practice paper for grade 3. We're starting with question 6 now. So if you turn with me to page 17 in the 2019 grade 3 practice paper booklet, we can look at this together. Now, I always say this and I do hope, um, you'll forgive me repeating myself, but it really is better to just try this on your own first of all. It doesn't matter if you go wrong. It's always better to learn by your mistakes. Always work in pencil and then you can just rub out anything that's not gone quite right and you'll learn much more thoroughly by making those mistakes. And so now we can check through these together. And so we're asked to rewrite this melody with the notes correctly beamed. If you were to play this as it's written now, it'd be so difficult to be able to keep time because you just can't see where each new beat begins. Whereas we have to beam notes to reflect our unit beat that we are counting in. So common time is 4 over 4, which means we're counting in quarter notes or crotchet beats. So we need to reflect each new crotchet or quarter note beat. And so before we even get writing, let's just think how we're going to do this. So let's find out where each new beat falls. So a half of a beat and a half of a beat give us beat one. Now here, let's just divide the maths out just in case. Math is not my strong su subject, so I have to just visualise this. And I see this. Here's our crotchet or quarter note beat. I'm going to divide that. So a quarter of a beat, a semiquaver or a sixteenth note. There's our remaining, a next quarter, sorry. And then there's our remaining half. And we can see that two quarters of a beat and a half give us a full. Now here we have one, two, three, four quarters of a beat. So there's our next beat. And then a half and a half of a beat give us beat four. So we're going to have to beam these literally as we've just circled them. So we've done the thinking. There are exceptions to the rule. For example, if you remember, just as a quick revision, you can beam four quavers, four eighth notes, so long as they don't cross over the halfway point of the bar in this time signature. However, I don't think that's going to crop up, but it's worth just remembering just in case. So a half of a beat and a half a beat gives us our first beat. A half and two quarters of a beat. Now then here, we have to just think about how the dot and the extra little sort of uh, tail, as it were, of the demi-semi sort of cancel each other out. So we could see there is on average four quarters. However, just to be thorough, let's just check the maths out here. So here is our quarter note crotchet beat divided into semiquavers or sixteenth notes. Now here we have a semiquaver. There's our sixteenth note with a dot after it that gives us half as much again. And there is the remaining eighth of a beat from that demi-semi, that sixteenth note. And then here we have our semiquaver, quarter of a beat, with a dot which gives us half as much again, so that's an eighth added on. 
and then this demi semi is an eighth of a beat, the 32nd note, and you can see that that gives us our full beat. So they will be beamed together, and of course that is a crotchet beat that stays on its own. So let's move on. So here, let's just keep on diagramming this out. We have a half of a beat in our quaver, eighth note, half as much again, is our semi-quaver, our 16th note, which is a quarter of a beat, half of a half is a quarter. That's quite a mouthful, isn't it? And then there's our semi-quaver, our remaining quarter of a beat. So there's beat one. A half and two quarters, we've already done the thinking for that. A half and a half gives us another beat. And there's our remaining beat. So we're going to be beaming these as we've just circled. So we've done all the hard thinking. Now I'm just going to get the note heads in place first of all because I've got enough to be thinking about without worrying about whether I'm going to run out of space in the bar. I'm keeping everything aligned as well just so I don't get lost. I want to lose track where I am because we're going to have some decisions to make about whether the stems go up or down because we start beaming these they're going to have to uh, sort of flip the stems accordingly so I'd prefer to think about that when my brain's clear and I know everything's mapped out correctly so it's just like I'm getting all the nuts and bolts in place first I suppose I can put the dot There we go, nearly there. That way I know everything's all nicely positioned. I'm not going to run out of space. And I'm not getting lost. There we go. So then we need to decide which way this stem's going to go because we need to join, we need to beam these together. So the middle line is the deciding line. This note here is five, one, two, three, four, five. This one is only one, two, three, four. So kind of this one wins the vote. So the stem will have to go up for the sake of that low note. These can all come down together. I'm showing the general direction by a, a diagonal in the beam. By all means use a ruler. I'm trying to be reasonably quick. So these four are gonna have together now the middle line can go either way. These should come up, they should come down. That's only one step below, that's one step above. It could go either way really. I think I'm going to have those coming up because there's two of those. And there's only one of those, so I'll let these win the vote. Two beams there to make them semi quavers, 16th notes. These will both go down. Ooh, should I use the ruler there? Shall I do that again? More haste, less speed, as my gran used to say. If you rush too much, you end up taking longer. So then these will both go up because this one can go either way to suit this lower one. Now then, that one can go either way, that's one step below, that's one step above, so it's a bit of a 50-50 split really, so I think I'll go down. I did go down there, so I shall go down here to match. Oh no, that was one note higher, so that was why that was, never mind. Just fancy those going down. Another beam there. So these will all join together and they can all beam upwards. There's a slight upwards direction for the notes. And now I need to put the extra little kick on there. That can go either way. So this will have to come down and the middle line can suit that accordingly. Semi. Okay, so all of these will have to have the stems going up. They're all below the middle line. There we go. This needs to go up so this middle line can suit. 
and that's just a stem there we go and you can see now at this beamed version it's so much easier for the performer you can see beat one beat two beat three beat four one two three four one two three four and we know they've done that correctly then let's press on to the next question similar sort of thinking but now we're having to change the values so we're asked to rewrite this melody but we're going to make everything twice the value and so in order to do that we're going to have to change the time signature and then rebeam the notes correctly to suit the time signature and the changed values so we are in three beats per bar we're on triple time and so we need to stay in triple time we can't change the musical effect here we counted three quarter notes three crotchet beats per bar and so in order to double that we must think in three half notes three minimum beats per bar so our time signature will be three over two and so now before we get writing let's just think how we're going to double everything so that will become a minimum half beat that will become a crotchet rest and then to double these we just remove the beam to make those into crotchet beats that will become a dotted minim remove the beam that will become a crotchet that will become a minim here we'll remove the stem that will become a semi brief a whole note remove a beam they will become quavers or eighth notes remove a beam so that will become a dotted crotchet followed by two semi quavers a dotted quarter note followed by two sixteenth notes this won't be coloured in that will become a minim and this will become a minim rest so now we can get the note heads in place I'm going to um, just get the note heads in place I think so I know not to colour that one in there's my rest. I might as well put the stem in here as I go. So these will be coloured in. But I don't need to add a beam because these are now going to become crotchet beats, quarter notes. And then they still need to be triplets, otherwise it won't work out. We've changed the musical effect, so we just bracket those as a triplet now. Um, uh, that can be coloured in, no tail now, that's a crotchet, don't colour that one in. This one won't need a stem on at all because this has become a whole note. So now, these will be beamed together but they'll only need one beam now because these are quavers or eighth notes. This first one doesn't need beaming because that's become a dotted crotchet, a dotted quarter note, but these two will. However, it needs two beams now because they are semi-quavers or sixteenth notes. Don't colour this one in. And then here's our minimum half note rest and let's just check that matches the time signature we've done Ooh, get that tidied up three minimum beats three half notes per bar one two three one with the dot here and the crotchet two three one two three one two three so we know we've done that right it matches our time signature there we go that's that one completed Let's move on to the next question. So now we have some revision testing, as it were. I hope you've done your revision because don't forget this is the performance directions and musical terms from grades one, two, and three, all accumulative. So we've got a lot of a revision task ahead if you haven't done so already. If you refer to the final pages of your PDF document in grades 1, 2 and 3, you'll see I give you some little tests or I'll give you some 
uh, revision tips and so on so do make use of those and now I do suggest that you test yourself with this so I hope you have a go with this first. If not, press pause, have a go, and then re-access into the video. And do be careful because these are multiple choice and sometimes the definitions can throw you off course a little bit. There's usually something that might just trick you a little bit. So be careful to read carefully. So we know that piano means quiet. P, piano, quiet. Stringendo is gradually getting faster that one always confuses me I, I sort of I remember but that one by the fact that it somehow in my head doesn't seem to say that and inversely that's how I remember it uh, dolce means sweetly I always think of sweet little dolly there I don't know if you find bizarre word associations that really does help you to remember these subito it's sort of sounds quite sudden I think and it does mean suddenly. Here we have the pause marker or the fermata sort of let the note linger on longer than its ordinary mathematical value so pause. Now here we have two words non is easy to see not so it's not going to be that one and it's not going to be that one so we've now narrowed it down troppo means too much so not too much there we go, that's that question completed. We'll look at the next question in the next video. I do hope this is helpful to you. I hope it's helping you with your studies. I hope that you're enjoying it. I'm certainly enjoying working through it with you. If you can give me a like, that would be really super. And please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. And please do share out the videos. Also, please do visit SharonBill.com and make use of all of the resource and information that's available to help you there. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.